tubes removed and uh, just set aside for now. You can see the uh, first IF transformer here, the uh, grid lead wire has uh, been spliced. So I'll actually remove all the uh, IF cans and the uh, antenna coil, oscillator coil to do a uh, thorough cleaning on the chassis itself. This appears, based on the documentation, should be a shielded conductor back over to the grid itself of the 6K7 tube here. So, up next, I'm going to remove the dial lamps and go ahead and see if I can get this glass off, including the fasteners here that hold it in place and then get the uh, dial pointer removed and go ahead and remove the uh, tuning condenser uh, next as well. As you can see, the tuning condensers rocking back and forth freely. I'm sure the uh, mounting uh, grommets that uh, should be there have just uh, deteriorated over time. Not uncommon. I'll get those uh, replaced. And just slide this out. Just set that aside for now. And then what's left of the uh, old gasket that went around that, I'll fabricate a new one that's uh, probably made out of felt. Now I should be able to remove the uh, dial pointer, the uh, beautiful dials on these uh, Zenith radios. You should just pull straight off uh, based on my uh, previous restorations I've done. And uh, let me remove the uh, second one, then I can get the uh, dial scale itself out and then remove the uh, retaining screws back over to the tuning condenser itself. Just working it loose and uh, sliding it out. You can see the diffusers for the uh, pilot lamps. They've uh, had better days. I've uh, refabricated some of those from uh, some plastic. Can't recall if I shared that in the past or not, but I'll do so in uh, this particular uh, video segment when I get to that point. And I'm um, just go ahead and remove the uh, three fasteners at this point that uh, hold this on to the uh, tuning condenser. Then we can go ahead and proceed getting uh, this section off and then focus on getting the tuning condenser removed. You can see the uh, hollow spacers uh, back behind me. We get this last one loose. Again, you can see this is a belt driven tuning assembly and uh, this is not the actual belt. Back years ago, you can see here in the picture in picture, I'm inserting from the previous video, just one of those no slip hair grips that I uh, use in place of a uh, belt at that time. So I'll replace it as well. One thing I want to be mindful of, just to make sure I get this back correct, so just a little visual documentation from the uh, antenna and oscillator section of the tuning condenser. You can see the gimmick capacitor where we've got the uh, conductor wrapped around about a turn and a half or so of the uh, lead going back over to the uh, grid of the 6-alpha-8. So um, just keep that in mind. And uh, you can see I've uh, parked the uh, tuning condenser fully closed just so I don't bend any of the plates. And flip this thing over now and see how many fasteners hold this in place. I think there's uh, just three if I recall correctly. And I believe that's correct. Again, we've got the uh, grounding straps as well, which I'll need to uh, deal with. But it should be uh, this fastener, this one and one more and then that should free up the uh, tuning condenser as far as the uh, physical constraints other than the uh, ground leads 
that uh, come from the tuning condenser in a few different locations in addition to the uh, lead wires uh, that go back here to the uh, oscillator coil it appears or antenna coil leave that there as a uh, reminder of where it goes and uh, go ahead and unsolder the trimmer and uh, see if I can just lift it here from the uh, rear section of the tuning condenser okay I think that's got it and I'm gonna go ahead and snip the uh, grounding straps right here in the middle where I can reattach them just solder them back together Should be in a position now where I can just remove the uh, three fasteners and uh, back this thing out. And one more hidden grounding strap. It's uh, right here, it comes up by the uh, mica capacitor. So I'm going to flip this over and just uh, remove that or cut it on the uh, top side and there's the old grungy tuning condenser I'll run it through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner numerous cycles but uh, before so I'll take it outside and uh, just give it a good rinse with some water and then I'll do some de-rusting as well probably just use my uh, citric acid like I've done in the past see if I can uh, clean this up just a bit and then we'll lubricate it and get it ready to go back in when it gets to that point in the uh, restoration. I really can't tell right now if there's a lot of rust on the chassis or is it mainly just uh, grease and grime. As you can see guys, the two E-caps are mounted underneath the chassis now, which is really fine. I may go back with some tubing and clean things up and uh, just place the uh, capacitors back in the tubing on the top side just to uh, clean up the uh, underneath side of the chassis uh, there's really no right or wrong it's just personal preference you can see uh, both are disconnected the uh, first one here toward the uh, front side and the rear side now with the exception the what appears to be a grounding terminal but this e-cap this connection should be uh, floating, not back to uh, chassis ground. Let me just see if we have continuity here on my meter. Hopefully you guys can hear that. So this is floating indeed. So for now, I'm going to just go ahead and remove this and leave this in place. So as a reminder, mental note. And indeed, you can see the uh, insulating material here. So this one is, uh, again, floating free from the uh, chassis ground. And what I believe to be the two original E-caps removed, 22506C, 16 microfarads at 250 volts. And then this one uh, just uh, wrapped in cardboard with no markings. Again, with this one being the uh, insulated, again, floating free for the uh, ground itself from the uh, chassis. And you can see that provides a little more room now on top of the chassis to start doing some uh, deep cleaning. I'm hopeful most of this will wipe off. I'm going to get just a little bit of uh, lacquer thinner, double gloved up with the uh, lacquer thinner in my hand. See if it cuts through this just a bit. Looks like I'll need something to uh, cut through this just a little stronger. The old power transformer, at least the uh, housing itself, has got a lot of crud on it. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Anytime you do so, there's uh, the risk of these wires that uh, come through or frayed and uh, I've had that too many times in the past but um, it also gives me a great time to do an inspection on the wires coming through from underneath and make sure we don't have anything frayed 
that will short against the uh, chassis itself and or another conductor. So uh, just another uh, safety precaution. Let me go ahead and uh, just look at my documentation. I know everything was hooked up correctly, or I'm assuming so, because the receiver was playing back uh, years ago. So uh, let me go ahead and just uh, confirm all the uh, connection points match the schematic. And I'll go ahead and get everything unsoldered and pull this thing out. And again, it just frees up a little more real estate on the top side of the chassis to do some additional uh, deep cleaning. When I made the earlier repair from my dad years ago, the uh, dial lamp wires where they were coming through the chassis were frayed and shorting out against the chassis. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out of the way because just underneath the uh, chassis at this point is a little peach shrink from my uh, previous repair. So I'll go ahead and just put new leads on and for now, let me just get this out of the way so it's not dangling in front of my face the entire time. Just twist these together. Now let me get back to the uh, transformer itself. All the documentation matched, I expected it to, but you just never know sometimes. So just getting the uh, four fasteners out of my way that hold the power transformer in place and then I'll go ahead and just take it out set it aside for now. We'll do some further tests on it later just to ensure again that uh, all the windings are in good shape and that we don't have resistance between any of the windings and or back to the uh, chassis itself. And uh, look for any frayed wires as well that would uh, potentially create an issue in the future. Let me guide this thing out, and there we have it. One small undersized transformer. You'll notice many sets from this period of time, the transformers fail, again, uh, push to the max as far as the uh, winding conductor size. Flip this thing around. Here goes all my uh, fasteners. And I got lucky. I found all the uh, lock washers and the uh, nuts here. I'll just place them back on as a uh, holder for now. Just kind of tearing this thing down in preparation for a restore. Again, I'll figure out what this uh, crap is here on the chassis. See if I can remove it without damaging the existing finish. Then I'll move over here and see if I can get the second IF can out, which will be a little bit of a pain in addition to the antenna coil, because all this is going to attach back to the band switch itself, the oscillator coil here, and then the first IF transformer here that I need to uh, get apart anyway to fix this uh, lead dress issue. So appreciate you guys uh, following along in the uh, series. More to come as time permits. Everyone out there take care and stay well.